Okay, turning to weather right now. Here's a live look from Alamosa and the southern end of our state. More cloudy there, I'd say, just at the mouth of the San Luis Valley. Meteorologist Marty Vinachinque is standing by. Marty, I saw a ton of campers on the road uh, just coming into work this afternoon. I think a lot of people are ready to get out into nature and maybe just uh, take a long weekend. Sounds like a great idea. They just have to be careful not to blow away, and they're going to have to worry about our thunderstorms this weekend. And they're not producing a lot of rain right now. This is a view from Peak Internet up on top of Gold Hill, kind of looking off towards the north here across Teller County into Jefferson and Douglas counties. And you can see that there's plenty of gray out there. There are even a few spots where we're getting a little bit of rain, but a lot of this is evaporating before it hits the ground. There's a little better view of that sort of evaporation process as seen from Community Banks of Colorado. It's the wispy stuff here that you see hanging from the clouds that really is coming down in the form of some sprinkles or just some very brief rainfall. The other thing it's doing is helping to enhance the wind a little bit. And obviously the wind is uh, pretty obvious and monument right now. And we could have some pretty gusty storms roll through the area for the next couple of hours, but I do think more wind than rain for most of you. Right now it's hot, 90s and 100s in eastern Colorado, 70s even up across the high country and the continental divide. Alamos is at 90 right now, so it might be a good thing to have some of these little weak storms come over because they will tend to cool the air off a little bit, and that's going to be tough to do this evening, so they kind of a tough night for sleeping. You see future cast shows these weak storms continue to try to track off to the east and then kind of fall apart in eastern Colorado, but you also see some rain showers up here over the continental divide. That's an indication of that approaching storm because it's pretty unusual in Colorado to keep rain going once the sun goes down, but at midnight, Futurecast still has it up here across the high mountain areas. We'll probably avoid most of that in eastern Colorado, except for maybe a few sprinkles around tomorrow morning. Futurecast at 6 o'clock shows a little bit of that. Um, I don't think we'll have any real widespread, long-lasting rainfall, but if you have a few sprinkles when you wake up tomorrow morning or maybe even a quick shower, don't let that surprise you. Still notice most of this activity is out here across the western half of the state, at least through daybreak tomorrow. Generally speaking, going to be in the 60s at lower elevations when you wake up tomorrow morning, probably 50s for our local mountain areas and mountain valleys. You have to get up pretty high to run into the 40s. Leadville will be one of those places. And tomorrow, here we go with the wind again. Man, it starts to crank up out of the southwest. It will warm us up very quickly and then be enhanced by any thunderstorms that come through. Those will be most widespread, probably starting late morning through early afternoon along the front range. And then we'll kind of have a line of showers and thunderstorms, maybe a broken line that continues to march off towards the east during the evening hours. Some of these storms will be capable of wind gusts around 60 miles an hour. Others may be hailed to one inch in diameter with the best chances likely along and west of the interstate, which is a little bit unusual. And one of the reasons for that is the dry air in place out here across the plains. So we'll be in the 80s and 90s along the interstate tomorrow. Should be near 100 for the far eastern plains, 60s and 70s up high. And fire weather conditions are still a concern over the southeastern corner of the state for tomorrow, where we're likely going to have red flag warnings, say along and east of Highway 71 from Lyman to La Junta. So whatever thunderstorms are out there tomorrow that are moving east, they'll produce a lot of lightning. Again, a lot of gusty wind. We could get some pretty good downpours out of some of those cells, and that line will march off to the east towards the evening hours before finally falling apart and drifting off into Kansas late. And then things get pretty dry here and hot again on Sunday with more wind. This is another day where fire weather is probably our primary concern. It does look like we'll cool things off through the middle of next week, which I'm sure will be welcome news for many of you. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get a lot of rain, though, through the middle of the week. Maybe a little better chance for some thunderstorms again by about the end of the week. Teller County, mid to upper 70s through the weekend. A lot of wind, best chance for storms tomorrow. Then we fall back into the 60s and 70s with some cooler nights, too. Uh, possibly falling back into the lower 40s by about the middle of the week. So we'll take the edge off the heat some. Canyon City from the 90s tomorrow and Sunday into the upper 70s perhaps by Tuesday. That'll feel pretty nice. Again, maybe a chance for a few showers by about Friday. Pueblo, your best shot for some rain is likely tomorrow too. Mid-90s right on through the weekend with plenty of wind around. Fire weather concerns Sunday. At least we cool off some through the middle of the week before we maybe start to come back around with some more heat by the end of next week. But with that comes a better chance for some storms once again. Heather, back to you. All right.